Right, this is quite a story. Uh, a company based in Elstree at the film studios has paired up with Steven Spielberg to make history come to life in an American museum. I went to visit Interactive Imagination last week. Uh, Nenzo, Andre and the team there have pioneered groundbreaking hologram technology. This has enabled them to create a, a theatre experience at the Museum of the Holocaust in Illinois, where 13 survivors of the Holocaust tell their stories they, they appear as these incredible holograms on stage and they actually respond directly to questions posed by the members of the audience it's very very clever indeed the uh, five million dollar project uh, part funded by steven spielberg's show foundation aims to keep alive the memory of uh, what these holocaust survivors endured and they want to do that for generations to come We're a small company in Hertfordshire, and this came about because uh, three years ago, um, Joel Soloway, who um, is a, a partner of ours in uh, Ohio, um, asked us to, to look at a project um, for the Illinois Holocaust Museum. And so we put a package together that would actually deliver a, um, a 3D holographic presentation to an audience uh, using um, artificial intelligence and using um, voice recognition um, for a collection of 13 Holocaust survivors. Um, and so we were asked by, by Joel to put a quote together, and we did, and we never heard anything until March this year. March this year, uh, we were asked to go full speed in actually delivering this project, and, and so we did. And uh, uh, it was a great success, and um, um, we, we now uh, have a, a project under under our belts that has been really dear to us and a very moving experience and probably one of the best projects we've ever um, undertaken. So here's the thing, you know, you, you're, you're using massively technical terms there and they are a little bit complicated, but ultimately for me and for my listeners, this is an incredible interactive experience that you've created here because you have these first-hand witness accounts from these Holocaust survivors who, let's face it, are now in their later years. And this is a way of preserving those memories and, and, and those first-hand witness accounts. Absolutely. I mean, I think um, it's a sensational um, thing because, um, you, you know, there'll be uh, many generations to come of children be able to, to, uh, who will be able to, to learn about uh, the Holocaust and, and uh, all, all the horrible things that happened during the hor Holocaust. And I think it's uh, um, uh, great for, for future generations. And I'm sure uh, children will learn um, so many things and so many elements of, of, of the Holocaust. Where did Steven Spielberg come into this? Um, well, he funded the filming of... Um, basically, each, each survivor, there were... 2,000 questions asked and uh, 2,000 responses and um, Steven Spielberg funded the filming and the, essentially what happens is the, the, um, the host asks the question so asks the audience a question and it's relayed via the host. The host then asks the hologram a, a question and it's, uh, there's a response and there's one of 2,000 responses. Now, that's all happening in the museum, in the Holocaust Museum in Illinois. You've got your nerve centre here in Elstree. Let's head towards it. So, Andre, you're the, you're the technology consultant, or, or perhaps uh, more easily described as the producer of this project. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't go to Illinois here, so I'm not able to get the full experience. However, this is the nerve centre. This is where you control what happens, so we can recreate the experience. And the first thing I see on your screen there um, is, in effect, a closed-circuit camera uh, view of the room. So what can we see here in the museum? Well, the museum is able to hold a small audience, typically school children, but often it's young adults and adults. Um, the host at the front of the room has got a control screen next to them where she chooses or he chooses which survivor will be displayed on the screen. How many survivors have We've you got? got? 13 survivors. Obviously, we could add more, but they've limited the number because each one has to be a bit handcrafted. So we sit down. What happens next? The host does a short preamble. Uh, at the beginning of the opening, they showed the film on the sponsors because they put a lot of money into this. Obviously, Spielberg's only one of the many sponsors. Uh, once then, one of the survivors has been chosen there is a short 2d film conventional film which is shown on the back wall which tells a little bit of the story of the survivor it shows photographs of the family i don't know 
doors opened. Most of the people in my compartment were dead. My grandfather was one of the people that died in this compartment going to Auschwitz concentration camp. When I got on this train, I was not quite 13. I lined up with the adults. Then they called age, and I told my mother she was in the wrong line. She went into a different line. When I asked several hours later when I would see my mother, they pointed to the smoke. This has been a heavy burden to carry. And then does this hologram literally appear? Yes. So at the end of the film telling the story of the survivor, the the person, the Holocaust survivor, appears in what appears to be 3D on the stage. It's very carefully lit, which is craft, to make it look like there's curtains and the stage has got depth. And the survivor's sitting there in a chair waiting for you to ask questions. Now on the screen here is Fritzy. It's Fritzy. Um, uh, this is not in full 3D hologram form, but what I can see is she looks incredibly realistic. Now, in the most simple layman terms possible, how do you do this? OK, well, a Victorian um, call, actually called Mr Pepper, who was an engineer, teamed up with a theatre impresario, and they perfected a technique all those years ago using a sheet of glass, which is positioned at 45 degrees. So the audience can see the stage... But if you put something either off stage in the Victorian technology or in our case on the floor, it's reflected by a sheet of, in fact, not glass, but plastic. I'm not having this. I'm not having you tell me that this wonderful technology creating this incredible uh, effect in the Holocaust Museum in Illinois dates back to Victorian times. Well, actually it does. And the technique that we've improved on is by using a very thin plastic membrane that we call a foil, and by lighting it extremely carefully, where there's true depth represented by the stage, the human brain is completely baffled into thinking it's 3D because you've got an image there cut out which is floating in space. You've got the proscenium arch and the curtains at the front and you've got the back of the stage where we represent it with drapes and your brain goes, there's three things there. They're really 3D. Therefore, the thing in the middle must be 3D. In effect, correct me if I've misunderstood this, you are reflecting an image uh, through, a, in effect, a screen at an angle that you're, you're then bringing into the middle of the stage. So it, it, it is almost like the, the um, you know, in the Victorian fairgrounds, the, the, the halls of mirrors. Yes, it's similar to that, but because it's transparent, if we brightly light the projection of the, the person, the hologram, but we don't light the surrounds, the, the background shows through. The front obviously has to show through because it's in front. So you've got what we call depth cues and that completely fools the human brain. And in fact, it's so realistic that we've had people describe it as tingling on the back of their neck when they see it. And we have filmed it very, very carefully. And we've also enhanced it to make the survivor look as 3D as possible. How were the 13 survivors chosen? Um, well, I think they chose ones that were first of all able to travel to the University of Southern California because obviously it's quite a long way and we have to remember that these survivors are all plus 80. Um, I think the oldest one is probably now in their 90s um, my mother, who is a Holocaust survivor, is 90 this year. She's still very lucid, but she wouldn't be able to travel to do this filming. So they've chosen people carefully. But I think they've also chosen people that have got a very, very strong personality. So their witness statement comes over with a lot of, uh, a lot of feeling. You use the word strong personality. The other strength that comes through having met Ziggy myself is the strong desire, in fact, the need to tell the story. Absolutely. The story is incredibly important. And also, if the person's got lots of personality, the audience feel much more immersed in their whole story. I wonder whether part of your motivation is that you've been brought up by a Holocaust survivor. It will have coloured the way she mothered and parented you. It will have coloured the way you grew up. And I'm guessing it will have coloured the way that you brought up your children as well. In a way, that is a privilege that you've had. Is part of your motivation in pursuing this project to ensure that those that don't have that direct access to people who survived the Holocaust can still have those first-hand accounts and have their life impacted in, in a similar way? I think education is so important. And also, these ethnic cleansings are not stopping. They're still going on in the world. We witnessed it in Serbia um, quite a few years ago and also recently in Africa with the Houthis. And I think it's going on at the moment in the Yemen. 
So Fritzi here to, to my left, she, she's on the screen. And, and at this point in the, um, in the presentation at the, the Holocaust Museum in Illinois, she would be appearing as a hologram. There would be a host uh, in the seat that I can see on the screen as well. And I would then, what, be asking a question that the host would then put in effect to the hologram? Yes, the host would repeat your question verbatim, uh, only because the sound pickup in the auditorium would be a little bit compromised. And then after a very, very short delay, the hologram would answer your question. So, so basically, the, the system is recognising the question. So it's not, even the, it's not even that the host is going, oh, that's a, question about, um, that's a question about how old were you? I'm going to give you answer number 26. The system itself is recognising the question. It's clever. Yes, the system is completely intelligent and it's using um, part of the Google voice recognition that a lot of people are getting used to now. We've got the Amazon system, we've got Siri on Apple um, and Google as well. And we've used that technology, which is the back end of some of this. It recognises your very words that you ask and it looks for keywords um, and it then links it to the, the most relevant answer. So were I to ask Fritzi now, what was your worst memory uh, of that period of the Holocaust, this, this would be her answer. The most terrific thing that I can think of this point was the separation, the coming to the camp, the coming to Auschwitz, the getting off the boxcar, the watching the separation, the watching the babies being pulled away from their families, from a mother, the watching somebody being beaten because they didn't stand in the exact line they were supposed to. At that moment, coming into the camp itself of, of that platform in Auschwitz, the families being pushed, pulled, punished apart, I think to me, if I need to think back, losing my family, not knowing if I would see them again at that point was probably the worst moment in my life that I can think of. And so how far can you take this technology indeed? How far can you take this project? Because it's obviously sitting very well at the Holocaust Museum in Illinois. Are you asking, are you offering it to other museums, other Holocaust museums in America, other Holocaust museums around the world? And and I guess, would you like to see it in practice and in use here in London? Absolutely, yeah. We're talking to our partners in, in the US and we're talking to the Candles Holocaust Museum and the Dallas Holocaust Museum. Uh, and we're also looking at the uh, London Holocaust Museum. Um, so, yes, we are definitely trying to push this as far as we can. And um, hopefully we, we will. Uh, actually, I think the Candles Museum is on. Uh, so early next year we'll be undertaking the work there. Just to go full circle from, from where we started, are you proud running a company? This We're in a small office here in Elstree, in Hertfordshire, a, a company that's had uh, interaction from Steven Spielberg this year, a company that is making such a difference to the Holocaust Memorial in Illinois. You must be very proud. Absolutely. It's incredible. Um, it's an incredible journey. And I think uh, uh, we'll go uh, uh, we're, from here with we can only go, get better. I think uh, we've got lots of ideas under, um, that we want to unleash and uh, hopefully we will do that. After I was here for many years, I would not associate with any survivors. I wouldn't join any clubs. I didn't want to talk about it. I couldn't and wouldn't. Until I became a grandmother and... My son came to me one day and he said, Mom, I need to know, and your grandchildren will need to know. And this is where I became the survivor. I had a promise that I needed to keep. But the rest is up to you, humanity to learn from our past so that this does not happen to anyone ever again. I have so much more to tell you, so please ask me questions. And isn't that the important thing? Ask the questions, get the answers and maintain the, uh, the memory, the oral history 
of these Holocaust survivors. I just think it's a great story. It's a little company in Elstree. Steven Spielberg involved, $5 million investment, and they've created this uh, hologramic uh, exhibition for the uh, for the Museum of the Holocaust in Illinois. If you want to find out more about uh, what interactive imagination do, you can go to their website, www.iiltd, so II Limited. Uh, dot com and there's actually a really really good article on it uh, if you just do a uh, a google search for the chicago tribune okay uh, just do chicago tribune and interactive imagination that will take you to an article which will show you uh, pictures of, of what they're doing they're remarkable that from elstree uh, to chicago that uh, that transatlantic link